Hey, what's up, my beautiful people? So today we're going to be looking at the top Pokemon Sword and Shield TCG sets. Now, the way these sets are ranked, I'm not gonna be the one to rank them, but it's actually gonna be the Pokemon TCG community on Reddit that is ranking them. Now, there is a user that goes by the name Card Donut on Reddit who posted last year in 2023, like the Pokemon Sword and Shield sets, and he had the community, the Pokemon TCG community, vote which sets are the best. So pretty much what he did was was he posted the sets and then he voted out like the worst set until only one set was remaining and then the remaining set was the number one set. So what we're gonna do is gonna go through every single set and kind of go through like the reason why these sets were voted out. And I know that this ranking is like a year old, but I still think it applies like this year in 2024 and even in 2025. And you know the top five sets, the top five, I think they are sets that would be worth investing in. Like if down the line you want to like buy sealed product and sell it, you know like in the future or whatever you know the top five sets they make sense to me so anyway let's go through them there's a lot of sword and shield sets um there's more than 15 man there is 17 pokemon sword and shield sets that's a lot so what i'm gonna do is for the bottom seven i'm just gonna name them out because i don't want to go through every single like every single one especially for the bottom seven okay so in last place the first one that got voted out was rebel clash followed by champion's path followed by darkness ablaze and then base set and then pokemon go followed by battle styles followed by vivid voltage so those sets were the first ones to get voted out with rubble clash being the first one and vivid voltage being the seventh one the reasons they got voted out is because you know they didn't really have like a popular pokemon in those sets or like the chase cards didn't really have a good art like the art wasn't that appealing or if they did have good art it was only like one card like if you're gonna open up like this set there's only like one chase card worth like trying to pull from that set you know like for example in darkness ablaze the only card worth pulling is the charizard and even then the charizard isn't even that pretty you know um for base set the chase card was marnie which i think is like a really cool artwork but like i said if you're gonna be pulling base set you're only gonna have like that one chase card which is gonna be marnie and then uh pokemon go had the mewtwo but the mewtwo card wasn't that exciting you know like it was it was cool but it wasn't like really exciting and that's like the chase card and then battle styles had the tyranitar but it only had the tyranitar Tar. All the other chase cards weren't that great, you know? And Vivid Voltage had the Pikachu. I mean, Pikachu was cool, but it was like the only cool card in that set, which is kind of like, do I really want to buy these card packs just to like get that one chase card, you know? So that's why like those seven were on the bottom, you know? It just, they were lacking a lot and they only had like one chase card. All right, so in the number 10 spot, the next one that got voted out and is number 10 overall, which was kind of surprising for me is Fusion Strike. Now, Fusion Strike had the popular Gengar and the popular Espeon and both cards were beautiful artworks so why is it number 10 so the reason it's number 10 is because it had bad pull rates you know when you have bad pull rates you know you're not having any fun opening up the packs when you're not pulling anything and also with the controversy and i think it was like two years ago when the set was released there was a controversy where like somebody from the pokemon card factory stole or, like a bunch of rare cards like the espions and like the gengars like they stole a bunch of like the alternate rare cards and just like try to sell them to like card shops you know they had like big stacks of like 100 cards man it was like insane just that whole controversy of like the stolen cards it kind of gave fusion strike like a bad image but i mean it does have some good cards you know i mean gengar i think is really cool so the next set that got voted out in the number nine set overall which might be surprising to a lot of you and it is surprising to me as well is evolving skies evolving skies so evolving skies is obviously the best set of the sword and shield era it's obviously number one but why did it get voted out well same as fusion strike it had bad pull rates like I had terrible, terrible pull rates. Like there's a reason it is nicknamed Evolving Cries because if you buy like a booster box of this set, you might not pull anything at all, man. Like it's kind of like a miserable experience trying to like pull like these cards. Like you end up getting nothing, you know, it's just like miserable to like open, you know, you're not having any fun. Like don't get me wrong, you know, Evolving Skies has like the most, some of the most amazing alternative art cards, you know, like the Moonbrion, you know, you got like the, like the Espeon, you know, Sylveon, Glacier you know like all these amazing evolutions you know rayquaza is in there too amazing alternate rare cards 
but people rarely pull them. You know, you buy the set and you just don't pull them. You buy a hundred packs and you don't pull those cards. And you know, it just ends up being like a bad experience. You know, if you're like opening up cards with like your kids or your friends, you're not pulling anything, you know, it just kind of sucks, you know? Another reason Evolve these guys got voted out is because the card packs are overpriced. Like right now, those packs are going for like 15 bucks a piece, you know, like for one booster pack, that is very, very overpriced, very expensive for modern packs. And it's kind of like not worth buying, you know, you're paying all this money just to get like a bad card pack where you don't get anything you know just stuff like that and also people just like buying it and scalping it yeah it's obviously the number one set in the sword and shield era but with like the bad pull rates evolving christ people scalping and it being very expensive it got voted out and it is number nine on this list all right so coming up and the number eight spot is shining fates now shining fates people loved it because of the shining pokemon who doesn't love shiny pokemon but the main reason this set got voted out is because shining fates it kind of paled in comparison to hidden fates and hidden fates was like the previous shiny set so i mean hidden fates was amazing but shining fates wasn't as amazing so that's why it's like a number eight spot number seven chilling rain so chilling rain it was an amazing set it also has some good alternative artworks but the main reason this one got voted out is because the pull rates weren't as great as the following sets like the top sets so i mean the pull rates were there but they weren't that great when it comes to pull rates i think evolving skies is probably like the worst set to buy because you're not gonna pull anything chilling rain the pull rates were kind of bad but they weren't as bad as evolving skies Okay, so number six, number six spot is Celebrations. Now, Celebrations was kind of mixed. It kind of had mixed feelings, but overwhelmingly, like the positive feedback with Celebrations was that it had a bunch of like beautiful holographic cards and it introduced like these older Pokemon card arts, you know, like the original base set Charizard, Blastoise, and Venusaur. It brought them back into the modern time with upgraded hollows and they were beautiful artworks, you know, it was nostalgic. People loved it and people had fun opening up Celebrations because, you know, every time you open up a celebrations pack you're guaranteed to get a bunch of hollows so i mean it was fun in that aspect and the reason it got voted out is because the other side the other side of like the people like there was people that enjoyed it but the other side of the people that didn't enjoy it said it felt kind of like um it felt kind of cheap you know like all they did was get a bunch of old art reprinted it and it felt like it didn't really bring anything new to the table you know which is a bunch of like older cards and that was about it you know just older cards brought into the modern time but nothing new you know so that's that's why like some people didn't really like it that much and that's the reason i got the number six spot you know yes it was love but there was a group of people that didn't really love it so it was in the middle you know it was mixed so in the number five spot we got astral radiance so astral radiance had some amazing cards such as the radiant greninja and the palkia alternate art but this set astral radiance as cool as it was the reason it got voted out is because it wasn't as memorable as the top four sets you know it came in number five but the top four were way more memorable than Astral Radiance. So number four, Silver Tempest. So Silver Tempest has the very popular alternate art Lugia. You know, that card was amazing. You know, really good artwork, man. That's definitely the chase card of that set. And also Silver Tempest brought one of the most dominant decks in the Pokemon TCG. And it's also something that a bunch of people that played the game appreciated that set. So that's why it came in the number four spot. In the number three spot, we got Brilliant Stars. Now, the reason Brilliant Stars came in the number three spot and is in the top three overall is because they had the beautiful Charizard and Arceus alternate art you know those cards were amazing and it also introduced the trainer gallery and the trainer gallery was really popular among fans because you know when you're opening up brilliant stars and you're pulling trainer gallery cards like it's fun you know like those cards are amazing they're full arts they look beautiful and it's fun to open up those packs so that's why brilliant stars came in the number three spot and why it is in the top three overall you know it's an amazing set and it is a set that is loved by a lot of people and people do have fun opening up these packs so number two the second top pokemon set in the sword and shield era is lost origin now the reason lost origin is number two is because it introduced the giratina alternate art and the aerodactyl alternate art and both of those cards are really popular and they are very sought after chase cards and also lost origin like brilliant stars also continued the 
trainer gallery cards so when you're opening up lost origin and you pull trainer gallery cards you know you're having fun with it now the reason that lost origin beat brilliant stars they were even you know like they they, they both like were very competitive for like the number two spot but the reason lost origin beat brilliant stars is because lost origin has better trainer gallery cards you know lost origin has like the pikachus has the charizard and it has like the gengar you know like lost origin has better trainer gallery cards than brilliant stars and that's why lost origin is number two and then the number one spot and the set that the pokemon tcg community on reddit loves and thinks is the best pokemon sword and shield tcg set overall is crown zenith now the reason crown zenith is number one and why people love it is for a variety of reasons so crown zenith replaced the trainer gallery with the galarian the gal, gal <laughs> i can't even say it man galarian gallery and pretty much the difference was is like the trainer gallery was mostly like pokemon with the trainers and the galar galarian gallery was mainly just featured the pokemon all right so that was the difference it's like one had like the trainer and the pokemon and then the other one had only the pokemon so anyway it continued the pokemon gallery aspect and it also continued the alternate art pokemon cards people loved pulling like the galarian gallery cards and they loved pulling like the alternate art cards and overall like this set had really really good pull rates you know the pull rates weren't bad every time you open a pack most likely you're gonna get a hit so opening up crown zenith it is fun with the galarian gallery you are most likely to pull a hit and it is also worth spending the money to buy these packs because you know you're having fun you know you're opening up with your kids your friends you know you're having a good time and even now in 2024 crown zenith is affordable you know you could go out to walmart target best buy or even go on amazon and you can still buy sealed crown zenith product at msrp price even now it is still affordable it is fun to open and has some amazing cards in there with the galarian gallery and the alternate arts and that is why crown zenith it is very favorable it is loved and it is the number one pokemon sword and shield tcg set according to the pokemon tcg reddit community so yeah what do you guys think of that man do you agree with that list do you disagree i personally disagree just a little bit because i think evolving skies as expensive as it is as bad as the pull rates are i think it is the number one set in the sword and shield era you know those alternate art cards the evolutions rayquaza dragonite those cards are amazing and they are some of the best cards like in the pokemon tcg right now so yeah i think and a lot of people agree that evolving skies should be number one but i can kind of see why people voted it out because it is expensive and the pull rates just suck you know but for investment purposes if you guys are interested in investing in pokemon cards you know like sealed pokemon cards crown zenith you can still buy it at msrp is an amazing set and i think crown zenith going heavy on that set and buying sealed product i think it's worth it man like i think in the future that set is gonna go up in price and you know go up there with like your bonus guys in price you know and right now crown zenith is going for like four dollars a pack but i can easily see it in the future going for like 15 20 25 30 dollars a pack you know evolving skies it is expensive right now you know 15 dollars a pack the booster boxes are almost 700 bucks i still think it's gonna go up in price but it's gonna go up in price slower you know it's going up but it's going up slow i think crown zenith when it does go up in price it's gonna go up fast when the time comes but anyway that's just my opinion let me know what you guys think do you think crown zenith deserves the number one spot or do you think another set deserves a spot and do you also think that evolving skies deserves the number nine spot or do you think it should go up in spots and fusion strike fusion strike i think it should be like in the number five spot i don't know that's just my opinion man um let me know what you guys think let me know what you think of the list and yeah you know drop a comment and if you enjoyed this type of video and you want me to do like more of these types of videos you know let me know drop a like but yeah thanks for watching and i'll talk to you guys in the next one all right peace out